Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us here on Pacific Partnerships for Education here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, and with me today is my frequent guest on the show, Dr. Jojo Peter. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ethan. Glad, glad you're here. We're going to be talking today about, about some interesting programs called uh, Pacific Voices at the Towers of Kuhio, and mm -hmm. uh, Jojo's on, on the board of that group and yes. very actively involved with it. Uh, our show title is actually Promoting Positive Cultural Learning Among Micronesian Youth, and that's really what Pacific Voices does, right? Yes, it does. Excellent. Yes, unfortunately, we, uh, we don't have the executive director uh, right. of Pacific Voices with us, but uh, I'll do my best to talk about the program. Uh, it, it, is, it was an idea that we came up with a long time ago, and her name is Innocenta Kiku, uh, Sound Kiku. Mm -hmm. She's a long-time uh, community advocate, uh, members of the uh, MHAC, Micronesian Health Advisory Coalition, and she was very active around uh, the beginning of the time when they were uh, <clears throat> doing the, the health care, uh, you know, restoration for COFA citizens. But one thing we noticed, you know, is that um, at the, what you think is called uh, KPT, mm -hmm. and it's now called uh, Towers of Cujillo Park. Right. Uh, terrace is that a lot of the children when they come from school, you know, you know they, you know they hang around outside and, uh, you know, and their parents don't come from work until right. about after uh, six o'clock. Right. This or is after very, five very different from their, uh, yeah. in the yeah. traditionally the cultures where they came from. When you'd be exactly. a big extended family, yeah. you'd come home from school, you'd have right. a job to do, a task to do, so right. helping your cousin out, yeah. helping your. Uncle or auntie somewhere doing something for them, yes. you know, and it were sort yeah. of structured. And now they live in these right. smaller units, not such extended. So areas. for that very practical reason, you know, the fact that you know we no longer have that, uh, you know, they no they no longer have that uh, that uh, extended family structure, right? Uh, physically present around them that uh, that would always account for, you know, you know what they do and. Uh, and they're accountable to in terms of like the kind of projects and services and learning that they would do uh, all the time, right. because living in the public housing, basically you're 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 put in there with uh, many other families that you know you go from one unit to, to another. You no longer are at your place. You're mm -hmm. in different other people's place. So what we try to do is also for the purpose of learning, right. is we try to find a common place for them to come together and uh, use uh, cultural learning and other kinds of learning that we can come up with. But we try our best to focus on cultural learning and, uh, I, you know, learn about, uh, you know, things like, you know, food preparation, uh, um, learn about navigational skills, dancing, uh, uh, stick dancing. Some, some, of you, some of you may have seen uh, our, our, our children when they perform at the various, uh, you know, you know, fairs, mm -hmm. and also during the play, um, which is one, also one of the project that the Pacific Voices put out, that the uh, Masters of the Current. Mm -hmm. You see these young kids out there uh, doing the stick dance. That's those are the members of our of that uh, Pacific Voices. Excellent. So in essence, filling up that time, you know, for them to continue learning, but also incorporate the cultural learning, something that can help them with a sense of pride in uh, development, pride in their identity. Right. And yes. also learn something in the process that they can share with their classmates when they go to school. Right, because yeah. here they're, they're much more cut off from, from their traditional cultural practices and, right. and right. traditions where if they were in Chuk or uh, somewhere, they would have right. people all around doing these things mm -hmm. all the time. They would be part of it very yeah. naturally, but here... And, we, and, yeah, and you're right, and these are kids that are either born in here, born and raised here in Hawaii, right. or have recently come from Hawaii at a very young age, that they will grow up to adulthood right. and uh, not having that uh, basic uh, cultural learning at the young age. Right. I'm not saying that we do all of it for them, but I think that's a model that we can look at yeah. because it, it really helped trans, uh, inspire these kids. Right. When we sent them, when we took them to uh, Look at the canoe that was built by um, the late great navigator Mao Piailik's uh, son. Mm -hmm. He came to uh, KKV, uh, 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 one of the uh, 
projects there at the uh, Kali Valley, and they build a canoe. So the kids are able to engage with that canoe mm -hmm. and learning about all of that. And also go to the, <clears throat> took field trip to see uh, Hokulea uh, and the other cultural uh, you know, events. It builds within that sense of cultural pride that they have something within their heritage that uh, it's worth learning about, but also you know, build a, you know, a, a sense of uh, cultural identity. Exactly, and it's, it's really important for, for kids to have that very positive attitude towards who they are, where, what they, where they come from, mm -hmm. believe in themselves, recognize that they can do interesting things too now. They, they can teach the other kids about the way that their dance they're doing or their method of food preparation or weaving mats or whatever it may be, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, because that really gets over the, any sort of, it can really help break down that stereotype threat that the kids perceive uh, if, they're, if they're regarded as, as being less talented or less able. I don't know. Right, right. Yeah. Absolutely, because uh, I know, like for example, in the Chinatown, mm -hmm. and I've been to a lot of the events there, and then the kids are very prolific in learning about their culture and performing at the Chinatown, mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about the children with uh, Chinese heritage. Mm -hmm. And of course, any other heritage, that's why we have all of these events, for them to you know to participate and learn, but also participate, learn, and share mm -hmm. with others. So that it also gives that sense of pride that I can actually teach something worthwhile right. to other children and also my community as something worthwhile to contribute to the larger community. Yeah, okay. So in a sense, what we try to do, and, and like for the Celebrate Micronesia, event where we you know, spent the whole day having cultural performances and uh, food the display and all of that. Our kids also participate there, so they are part of the larger Micronesian group mm -hmm. sharing with the larger Hawaii, mm -hmm. our new community here, mm -hmm. you know, what we have to offer. Right. And uh, then ultimately, uh, uh, all of that uh, cultural learning is the late Mao Piai Luka, and, and that's kind of like we follow in that uh, in following that footstep where, you know, him sharing this knowledge, great knowledge about navigation, right. sort of gives us, it, it, it opens the door for us to say, okay, there's something worthwhile here that we can follow in, uh, in that direction and teach other children and teach other families, uh, family members. Exactly. Our, uh, yeah. it, it, and it raises awareness in the broader community of the fact that yeah. there is a, a vibrant Micronesian community yeah. here. They, they have interesting, worthwhile things to contribute and, and, yeah. and to put forth that really just enrich the culture because there is there, there is somewhat of per pervasive attitudes, somewhat of a negative tone about a, a lot of Micronesian immigrants. So this is, this is really, it's a, you're really sort of hitting on, on all these, these right. levels from right. the individual child yeah. is going to gain, yeah. the Micronesian community gains, and the larger island actually all gains. And this, yeah. this is a great win-win-win. Yeah. And, and also another bottom line, um, of this is that it feeds right back into their own education. Right. It's not something that is uh, counterproductive to learning. It is actually something that enforces and enhances learning. Right. So they have something to, to do uh, when within the larger scope of the, their educational process. Mm -hmm. They go back to school. <clears throat> There's a project, we know that some of them have projects at school where it feeds right back into what they're doing at the, at the, at the Pacific Voices Center. Sure. So w our center is located at KPT, mm -hmm. we are Towers of Kuyo Park. Mm -hmm. We're very fortunate that uh, you know, the management there has given us one room. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, room uh, B103, and we encourage people to come and visit mm -hmm. that center. Uh, we, uh, we have, we've had uh, uh, Native Hawaiian hula dancers come and uh, oh. you know, sh uh, teach our kids how to dance hula. We have stick dancers. Uh, from Micronesia, we even have like technology people come in, Excellent. and uh, yeah. And I remember uh, a, a, a retired uh, one of our friends, retired professor from the special ed program at UH, uh, Dr. James Kaugi, donating a lot of the equipment uh, that uh, the children use to do technology pro project, like uh, iPads, computers, uh, cameras, and you know, so they're able to do like. Uh, uh, the photography um, projects so can, and many many other uh, organizations have participated in, in coming in and filling in the you know the the gap uh, where the students we don't have a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. uh, Innocenta is a half time uh, uh, <clears throat> half time employee of the uh, Kokuakali Valley uh, Clinic, 
and we're fortunate that uh, that's one of the project that uh, they were, they're, they're so nice and kind to support. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we just have good-hearted people who who know something about us, and even the the uncles and the aunties in, within the housing, uh, uh, you know, those uh, structures mm -hmm. would come down and uh, you know, either they watch the kids uh, when they're doing projects, or they help teach or sure. coordinate some of the practice and stuff. So. Uh, we'll see a, some of that uh, later on. In, in yeah, no, that yeah. so, sounds like a rich, a rich uh, smorgasbord of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of uh, projects. And you really are doing a lot of different yeah. things to help the kids academically, help them socially, help them uh, figure out both learn more about their own culture, but also mm -hmm. sort of integrate better into into the culture here too. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think uh, I don't know. Do we want to pop up uh, one or two of the pictures that we have? Well, you know, like let me just uh, sure. do things. Like one of the popular things that we we the children really enjoy is the storytelling, uh -huh. and uh, you know, to be able to listen to a story or to tell a story, somebody come in and help them with the story thing, and actually grew uh, into the direction of the theater. Mm -hmm. Because storytelling, I mean, theater is an excellent form of storytelling. Sure, sure. And there are people who are very good at, uh, you know, putting together a story. And so I remember uh, our director, Innocent, uh, um, actually did, uh, she took a, uh, a, a legend uh, of, uh, of, from the place where she, she grew up, mm -hmm. and she originated from, her parents originated from, and and took that legend and retold it in within uh, you know so modern day concept mm -hmm. in a way that it's able to be performed and uh, enacted oh, uh, by by the children that she was working with mm -hmm. and uh, other organizations saw that uh, that performance and they used that as part of their outreach um, and their program mm -hmm. uh, in reaching out to the Micronesian people and that that was very very good and also more recently, and I think uh, a lot of people have, may have seen the, the theatrical performance of uh, Masters of the Current, mm -hmm. and I think that's uh, that is, a, is such an incredible, incredible job with a lot of partners that come together and work with Innocenta to to uh, put that play on. And I think we may see some uh, pictures from that. But just this idea that it, it, it it's a project that uh, you know we sort of thought about, you know, we thought it up, mm -hmm. but it's really everybody's project that there's always room for somebody to to bring their expertise into. Yeah. Okay. And the bottom line is it has to be able to uh, translate into learning right, right. for our children. Yeah, so, and, yeah. and that, then it becomes a really positive force there, but, but there's, yeah, there's a huge yeah. array of very rich traditional yeah. legends and tales yes. uh, from all, and they vary from, from place to place, of course, although there are some common themes, yeah. but, but turning those into plays is a great idea. And yes. you know, helps the kids learn about them, <laughs> again, maintains these cultural values, reinforces them, mm -hmm. um, gives them something to do, and again, a, a sense of pride and, and pride of place, pride mm -hmm. of self, so that's, that's all, uh, sounds absolutely super. Um, I tell you what, I think maybe what we'll do is take a quick one minute break mm -hmm. now and then, uh, then when we come back we will be able to go through the, the photos that we have. But right now um, we are going to take a break. I'm Ethan Allen, a host of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Dr. Jojo Peter is with me here in the Think Tech studio today and we're talking about promoting positive cultural learning among Micronesian youth. We'll be back in one minute. I'm Andrea Gabrielli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matter to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests, the students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. 
and you're back here with us uh, on Think Tech Hawaii, here with the Partnerships for Education. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, and with me today is Dr. Jojo Peter. Welcome again, Jojo. We're talking about promoting positive cultural learning among Micronesian youth, in particular a, a program called Pacific Voices at the Towers of Kuhio, mm -hmm. right? And Jojo is a board member of that. We're, we were hoping to have the executive director of the organization, but she, she has unfortunately uh, been called away for some other business. But uh, this is a, a really quite a broad array of different kinds of programs to mm -hmm. do help between the time when kids get out of school and come home and before their parents get home and, and keep mm -hmm. them occupied, enrich their lives, help mm -hmm. familiarize them with, with their own cultures and some of the other island cultures, uh, have them doing and participating active things they can then take back and share, teach others, mm -hmm. raise the profile of the, of the Micronesian community in, in Hawaii and, and generally uh, sort of have it, make it make it a win-win-win all around here, yes. right? Mm. Great. So uh, I know we have uh, we do have some pictures here of some some of the kids uh, participating in some of these programs. Maybe you can sort of walk mm -hmm. us through, through mm -hmm. them here. Well, there, we can't fit all the, all the pictures, then, right. and I just had to go through some of the pictures that we had, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> they. There's just so much project that they do. Right. So here's the East-West yeah. Fest. Yeah. This is part of the, uh, they were part of this East-West Center, but that's our uh, local uh, East-West, I mean Pacific Voices. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's uh, some of our kids that, you know, that are participating in our, in our program. There's a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> and you can hear them, uh, you know, just coming into the parking lot. You know, because they're loud. They're some of them are chanting, and some of them are like just practicing their 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 stick dance. And and on top of that, you can hear uh, the director Innocenta's voice trying to uh, you know navigate the whole thing to make sure that if all the kids are are, are respectful of each other. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. So this is a picture, and that's Innocenta uh, okay. Sound Kiku. She's a retired police officer from Saipan, actually, uh -huh. and that's okay. her background. She's from Chuk, her, her parents are from Chuk. Uh, she was one of the, she is a, a, a really uh, strong community advocate, mm -hmm. and she's part of uh, the Micronesian Health Adv uh, Advisory Coalition. Mm -hmm. uh, they sponsor a, um, a basketball tournament, it's called All Mike. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also for volleyball, all my men and all my women, mm -hmm. every year. Uh, the next one will be coming up this uh, this summer. And that the the origin of this is uh, that they were trying to raise money uh, to help pay for the legal fee for the lawyers who will help represent uh, the Micronesian during that uh, basic health Hawaii uh, fight against the state of Hawaii when mm -hmm. they uh, threatened to cut off the Micronesians. Uh, or to take the uh, Micronesians off the uh, MedQuest uh, program. Mm -hmm. So sometimes our, our kids get invited to go to participate in other, um, many, many other programs. Mm -hmm. And this is just one of them. Uh, this uh, young lady, the first one here is uh, uh, Director uh, uh, Innocenta's daughter, uh, Nene. And uh, these are her school friends. These are people from uh, from the, you know, the, uh, uh, Kuyo Park uh -huh. uh, Terrace, and they're very, very diligent in uh, in in practicing every day, Excellent. and really trying to learn how to. Uh, now, I, I mentioned cultural learning uh, right. and engagement with uh, with uh, with uh, their culture right. as something that we really value for our kids, yes. and because you know, there's something about respecting. Uh, other people's uh, heritage, but if you cannot respect your own, then you, you, you sort of open up yourself up as a, you know, uh, as not being able to st what we call stand on solid ground right. of your own culture, okay. because uh, you have you don't have anything to stand on basically. Right. So what what we do is we invite some of these. Uh, aunties to come in and also help uh, with other things. Like you can see they're sitting in a mat and learning how to pound breadfruit. Mm -hmm. And uh, breadfruit preparation, breadfruit is one of the mainstay of uh, diet back home. Right, very right. stable. And there are several ways you can prepare them. Mm -hmm. One way is this, to pound them, uh, the breadfruit and and, and and prepare it and share share it amongst your relatives. And a lot of the kids nowadays, they, they see it being you know eaten or being sold. But they don't. Know, they don't appreciate the hard work that comes behind that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the women are able to, you know, to do that uh, as a way to 
uh, sustain themselves here. So, that's great. yeah, so that's cultural learning. Uh, it's really valuable to, to learn. I, uh, I mentioned the uh, enactment of that uh, of that uh, <clears throat> that legend legend of a of a war a war between the two islands where Innocent uh, came from or both uh, you know, she has ties in in on two both of the islands so we have one of the aunties come and help the children or the young ladies here and the, the gist of the story is basically you know when we f we focus on war we think that it's all a men's mm -hmm. business. But actually, in this one particular warfare, uh, in one in one particular war, it was the women who actually diffused the conflict. Huh. If the women had not stepped in, there was this one island would have been invaded and taken over by the warriors from the other island. Hmm. So it was the women, uh, in according to that legend, who used their own connection to to that uh, invading island. Hmm to sort of diffuse the conflict between between these two islands and so therefore it, kind of, it, it, it gives you that a little perspective yeah, on, on the, the power of women yeah, that true. normally you, when you think about warfare and even in the West right. we think of warfare and everybody think of it as sort of a you know a man kind of business until recently when you're trying to to include women in, in the service. Mm. But warfare as a, as a general mean, means of like, uh, you know, uh, acquiring, uh, you know, resource and building relationship is a very complex, uh, right. you know, cultural event. Right. And it involves a lot of things from uh, relationship to uh, cultural knowledge, to even knowing your genealogy. Right. And not only that, but also know the kind of rituals and sorcery that are a knowledge that are you know related to warfare. So, to understand that complex uh, you know right. cultural thing that uh, that is warfare, this program here uh, actually tried to teach the young kids that uh, you know that it's a complex thing, but women also have a strong strong part in, 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 in cleaning up the mess that men cut themselves right, in. Right, I was gonna say, you're using conflict to yeah, part yeah, better instead than of like, conflict, yeah, yeah. Instead of allowing this conquest to go through. Right, you don't and, want the conflict to yeah, yeah, They basically save a lot of lives by yeah, you know, stepping in and, and diffusing that one. Super, super. Yeah. We also teach our, our children to, to be socially aware. Excellent, excellent. And uh, as you can see, they are at this, at the, they participate in this larger group uh, that we were doing at, at the, this event at the state capitol. And these are our Micronesian young people that we teach them about the, the even the, 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 their stories here. Mm -hmm. We try to teach them that their existence here has not always been easy. Mm -hmm. Their family's existence here f to help them get through this, uh, their life here in Hawaii has not been an easy thing. Right. And we teach them that, you know, we need to be responsible uh, about not just ourselves, but for other people. Mm -hmm. By teaching the larger Hawaii uh, community of Hawaii, uh, these values that uh, the state of Hawaii and the people of Hawaii and uh, the Constitution of the United States aspired mm -hmm. to hold in equality and respect. Right. And we remind people that, you know, these are your values we're learning. Right. You know, it's not something that we invent ourselves. Right. These are values that, you know, that is inherent in, in the life and, and the fabric of this uh, democrat, uh, democratic society. Yeah. So we, we have them, you know, we teach them about the issues. That's great. So they're aware of it. Very it's true. not, they're just, they're not just holding up the signs. Yeah. Very they're true. aware, Cultural. yes, yeah. yes, they're aware of it. And sometimes, you know, they, they understand why some of the prejudices, you know, sort of filters through to them mm -hmm. in school that way because of the misunderstanding and the stereotypes. Sure. So they're able to understand that, you know, I know it's an, it's an early age and, you know, their kids are mm -hmm. kids, but at least they will remember when they did, did that, you know, in the future. Right. And they will think twice when they, you know, they're in a position of, uh, you know, of being on the other side of the fence, mm -hmm. looking at the need of other people. So, right. so we're very proud of the fact that they they were able to come with us to mm -hmm. the state capital and participate in all of the 
in all of the so they they didn't just participate in the in, in the theater and in the other things but they're also participating in the social uh, justice uh, you, uh, engagement you of the taught them this broad array of right uh, right of right wild right. skills and yeah attitude. so every now and then I have to, I have to come in and remind them I say you know we are in this place called Hawaii you know there is a history here and you have to understand the native Hawaiians. Uh, you know that uh, then they also have to understand the particularities of our right. you know why we're here and uh, you know the kind of governing forces that uh, sure. sort of lands us in this right. in this project so yeah. the Pacific voices is is one of the projects that we're very proud of oh. it's part of our larger community yes. uh, efforts there are uh, we have the we are Oceania uh, right. center one stop right. center we, we introduced that on this program also. Mm -hmm. We have the MHAC Micronesian Health Advisory Coalition, and they're the ones who were in charge of, I mean, not in charge, but they really stepped up the advocacy earlier in, in doing this. And they continue to do projects in the, in the community. Excellent. We have, we have the COFACAN, who continue to work with policymakers. Uh, recently, the issue of uh, driver's license renewal uh -huh. for COFA citizens came up because COFA citizens Unfortunately, through the intricacy of all of the policies that have been created during the recent, um, you know, uh, recent years, uh, we fell through the crack by that, by a requirement that we have, to, we as a group can only renew our license every year. Hmm. We cannot do it for more than one year. Really? Huh. I yeah, I know that's know. unfortunate, no. but oh. our citizens come in and work, and as a worker, you need Right. You need to have your driver's license, right. uh, yeah. you know, to be renewed more than one year, so it doesn't yeah. become a humbug. Yeah. Huh. You know, you go out there and you wait for the, you know. Yeah, I can. That's a long, yeah. a long process. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So everybody would agree that, yeah, there is a, there is a dis little of a discrimination going on there, right. Right. and a disparity. So we're trying to get people to uh, to work together to fix that. So go for cancel. We have all of these organizations, and and I wanted just to just make sure that uh, that people also recognize that. Uh, we have other things besides all of the other stuff going on, uh, and Pacific Voices is one of those. Yes, that okay. is promote positive learning and engagement among the young young people. It, so. it sounds like you're doing amazing amazing work there. Uh -huh. I'm, it's I'm really sure people like Innocent uh, yeah. Sound Kiku uh, and uh, Josie uh, Howard, Kathy, and mm -hmm. the other people uh, who are doing MHAC and uh, MU, and uh, you know, even they get called to schools. To talk to teachers and administration, and in and, and trying to see how we can engage better for the Micronesian kids. Well, this is an issue. This is an a a a a, a great example. Right. Okay. Pacific Voices. Yes. Yeah, so very positive. Very positive. Lifting, yeah. Yes. Mutually win win kind yep. of thing. So we win. invite anyone, anyone out there, you know, who's interested in helping, you know, teach the kids, you know, all the beautiful things about this culture and. Uh, you know, in this place. And, and you come by to, to heal. Yeah, yeah. yeah park hours. Right. Okay. Excellent. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much, Jojo. This has been a very, very enlightening uh, dialogue here. I've, I've learned learned a lot and um, wasn't really aware of this group before this. So it, it's great to hear of all, all the good stuff they're doing. Thank you for being a part of it, too. Thank you, Ethan. And thank you for being my guest. And I hope you'll come back uh, week after next for another episode of Pacific Partnerships in Education.